Pour croire que ce matin-là, ma vie serait bouleversée à ce niveau-là. Ça, ça a fait comme un gros blackout. Ça a fait dans ma tête, non, je, je peux pas, non, ça n'a pas de bon sens. Je suis venu travailler le matin, je regarde ce qui se passe. Là. They told me that there's a chance for hepatitis, uh, HIV, and any other bacteria that comes with saliva and bite wounds. C'est comme si ta vie bascule, parce que là, ça a un impact direct sur ta vie personnelle. And I remember just feeling sick, absolutely sick. And I was thinking, oh yeah, now I'm, now I'm HIV positive. This inmate was given an inhaler while he was in the strip cell, and he had uh, smashed the inhaler and he was attempting to harm himself with it. Uh, after we retrieved the inhaler from him upon leaving the strip cell, I'm just turning, just turning away from the door, and I can hear. <sighs> I got it right in the eye, and then all of a sudden I couldn't see. And I remember it hit me, and I just kind of turned and I thought, I'm blinking, thinking, what the hell is that? And I, I then I realized it's his spit. And it's like right in my eye, and I remember going like this and wiping it out of my eye, and it was like right on my eyeball. Oh, man. And then the nurse grabbed me by the back of the shirt that was there, and she goes, come with me right now. And she dragged me from the strip cell about 25 feet away around the corner to a treatment room. She goes, get your head under the sink. You have to rinse your eye out. You have to do it. Get your eye under there. Get the water. You have to hold your eye open. So I'm sort of confused at the time when I'm holding my eye open and I'm under the sink rinsing it out and I'm kind of looking at her with the other eye and she's going through this binder and I can see on the side of the binder uh, protocol for exposure to uh, infectious disease. I found out that this inmate was HIV positive and he liked to spit at staff in an attempt to infect them. He'd bite his mouth, the inside of his mouth before he'd spit so that he spit at you, he had blood in his, in his spit. So he, he was, he, his attempt was to infect you, is that, that's what he was trying to do. On va te amener à l'infirmerie. Tiens-tu? Es-tu correct? Es-tu correct de me suivre ou... OK. And I remember just feeling sick, absolutely sick. Right at the time while I was with my head under there, I'm thinking, oh yeah, now I'm, now I'm HIV positive, I got, kids, I got a girlfriend, I got a family life. Fuck.
approached the inmate outside. When we were ordered, verbally ordered him to stop several times, he continued to walk away and ignore us. As I was attempting to physically restrain him at this point, he bit the side of my head, uh, just uh, in and around my left ear. I could feel this, his, his teeth marks here. I could actually feel his teeth closing around the side of my head. He was reaching towards his waist with one arm, uh, which we later found out he had a weapon in his waistband. And the other hand, he was propping himself up. So when I, when I took that arm out, he had grabbed it, brought my hand up, and he bit my thumb hard enough that his, uh, his teeth prints were in my thumb and blood was drawn. <laughs> Salut Steve. J'ai entendu parler de ce qui s'est passé. Euh, C'est moi qui ai chargé de t'amener à l'hôpital. Tu sais que je fais partie du programme d'aide aux employés, ça fait que s'il y a de quoi, tu peux me parler. Comment ça va? Ça va aller. T'attends l'autre bar. The inmate was asked to give a blood sample with, uh, in order to determine uh, what diseases may be present in his system, so I, I, we would have a better idea of what I would have to undergo regarding medical treatment. Uh, the inmate refused. As such, I had to undergo the HIV, uh, uh, rather the counter HIV medications, and the hepatitis shots and the hepatitis B shots as well, because he simply refused to provide us with the information we needed. I believe that the victim should be the one to know whether or not there's uh, any kind of contractable disease. They were the innocent party in all of this. It wasn't like I asked to be bitten. If the correctional officer had uh, the information about the status of the inmate in terms of a blood sample, it would make a tremendous, absolutely a tremendous um, difference uh, because you know then that you're going to be okay, you know that your family is going to be okay, uh, and also you have been given information and a task and a procedure has happened in order to help protect you and protect your mental health and the mental health of, uh, of, the, of the family. Good. Moi et des collègues, nous nous sommes dirigés dans la salle commune alors qu'il n'y avait plus de détenus pour effectuer un petit peu plus une fouille approfondie, savoir si les détenus auraient pu dissimuler de la contrebande, soins d'armes artisanales ou quoi que ce soit. Je me suis penché en dessous d'une table 
j'ai regardé. Et à ce moment-là, quand j'ai déposé ma main au sol, j'ai senti une douleur à la main. Fait Immédiatement, j'ai regardé et là, j'ai vu que dans un morceau de plastique, il y avait un aiguille. Donc, immédiatement, j'ai retiré mon gant de fouille et là, j'ai vu que euh, il y avait, je, je saignais au niveau de la main, que ça m'avait perforé euh, la peau. Ça m'a fait dans ma tête, non, je, je peux pas, non, ça n'a pas de bon sens. Là, je suis venu travailler un matin, je regarde ce qui se passe. Là. Puis là, je voyais dérouler parce que d'autres de mes confrères, d'autres de mes consoeurs l'avaient vécu. Je savais par où, ce qui, de, par où ce qui avait passé, puis ça ne me tentait pas. Puis je ne voulais pas l'entendre. Là, à ce moment-là, on se met à penser à plein de choses, à quoi cette aiguille-là a pu servir. Donc là, c'est là qu'un petit peu un sentiment de panique qui s'empare un peu de nous en se disant euh, euh, qu'est-ce qu'ils ont fait avec ça, qui a été en contact, est-ce qu'il y a une personne ou de nombreux détenus ont été en contact avec les l'aiguille. Ce qui devient le plus inquiétant, c'est le nombre de détenus, des fois, qui sont contaminés soit par le VIH ou soit par l'hépatite. Parce qu'en prison, hein, ils ont une vie quand même assez euh, rock'n'roll. Ouais, je ne connais pas leur, euh, leurs habitudes sexuelles. Ils peuvent se tatouer, ils peuvent prendre de la drogue, ils peuvent faire des intraveineuses, ils peuvent faire un paquet de choses qu'on n'a pas nécessairement le contrôle, malgré qu'il y ait une sécurité dans les pénitentiaires, mais la, la vie, la qualité de vie ou la qualité de salubrité de l'équipement que les détenus prennent pour s'injecter des drogues ou euh, euh, lorsqu'ils décident de faire l'amour entre eux autres, on ne le sait pas. Fait que... Là, il y a des risques d'infection, euh, puis tant qu'on n'a pas les résultats des tests, on ne sait pas si on est porteur d'un virus quelconque. Il y a toujours une possibilité de risque, mais ils ne sont pas capables de l'évaluer. Parce que c'est euh, impossible à évaluer. Il ne peut pas te dire à 100 il n'y a pas de danger. Il ne peut pas te dire, euh, bon, regarde, ce pas grand-chose, ta coupure ou tes coupures sont, sont mineures, ça n'arrivera pas. Ma conjointe, sur le coup, elle dit, hein, tu crées, elle dit, qu'est-ce qu'on va faire? Elle dit, on va avoir un enfant, tout ça. Elle avait même posé la question au, au médecin. Puis le médecin immédiatement avait dit, ben là, madame, elle dit, euh, pour l'instant, je pense pas que ce soit... Je pense que la, la vie et la santé de votre conjoint est, est comme... Euh, présentement, c'est ça la priorité. I was placed on what are called antiretrovirals. They're HIV medications uh, designed to counter the presence of the potential presence, rather, of the disease in the bloodstream. They are extremely taxing. Uh, they are very, very hard on my on the system. Uh, I experienced uh, all of the side effects that they had listed to me. The side effects to the medication uh, include uh, stomach cramping, um, weight gain, uh, insomnia, irritability. The first week, it was like diarrhea and a lot of nausea, gastrointestinal issues, uh, lethargy, uh, weight gain. You know, sometimes I'd wake up in the morning, feel okay. Uh, a few hours later, you'd end up sweating, you'd be hot. Uh, the whole time, you were like being in a fog, just tired and sleepy. Towards the end of that 30 days, I started to develop problems with my back. My back started to bother me. Uh, And that progressively got worse to the point where I was having a hard time walking around, a hard time moving. I walked around humped over all the time, like my back really hurt. What happened to me was I was supposed to take it for 28 days. Um, after three weeks, the side effects were uh, interfering with my liver, which is on this side. So I started with this pain probably after about 14 days, and it really got really bad. So I was due for my next um, my three week follow up. When I went in for my three week follow up, the nurse to, uh, at a clinic in Winnipeg told me to come off the medic, to stop taking the medication immediately because it was damaging my liver. Um, I don't know whether I would ever take it again. Perhaps maybe the only time if I got poked by an, or, or spit on by an inmate who had full blown HIV or AIDS, I would probably take it. But other than that, I don't I don't know if I would actually take it. The costs are too high. Si j'ai le virus, si je suis infecté, je pourrais y passer par la salive. Ça veut dire que j'ai été inquiet rien qu'au niveau d'embrasser de, ma blonde. On a la peur d'être contaminé, puis bon, il va-tu l'avoir, il va-tu me le donner, il le tue, hein? Euh, on prenait pas de condom, fait il a fallu recommencer euh, l'usage des condoms, fait que notre vie a changé énormément à ce niveau-là. Euh, tu sais, si moi j'ai une coupeuse, puis lui il a une coupeuse, puis euh, on s'accroche, euh, ben il pourrait me contaminer. 
pas que tu te sens sale, mais tu te dis, je suis peut-être porteur de quelque chose, tu fait que c'est complètement c'est mis de côté. On se marie pour le meilleur, pour le pire. Là, on était dans le pire, mais ça dure combien de temps, le pire? C'est quoi le pire? Comment on gère ça? Euh, comment est-ce qu'on vit ça? Euh, puis moi, là-dedans, oui, j'ai peur, je t'inquiète, mais lui, c'est doublement pire que, que moi, parce que peut-être que moi, je ne l'attraperai jamais, parce qu'il y en a qui ne l'attrapent pas, mais lui, il peut l'avoir. The consequences on my family life were quite serious. Uh, there was immediate psychological stress on myself and certainly the part of my wife. Physically, it's changed quite a bit because we're not able to be intimate on a regular basis and not in the way that we used to be before. We have to be much more careful in terms of using protection and just contact with bodily fluids and things like that. I'd hug my kids, but I didn't kiss them. I was so concerned about Uh, about exposing them, even though the risk is, you know, as you're told, it's minimal. I st still was very, very worried about exposing my children. We've sort of done everything right in terms of taking the medications and seeing the doctors and doing all that stuff, but at the end of the day, we still don't know that he's healthy. They advise you not to have uh, sex with your partner for... Uh, at least the first six months and, and uh, after that protected sex. So for five months we, uh, we didn't have any contact with each other at all. We slept in the same bed and that was it. We didn't kiss, we didn't really show each other much affection. You simply have to exist in a physical isolated state for at least uh, the, the period of the, med uh, the, the medication is uh, in effect. We went for dinner one night and had some wine and, and uh, We were going to practice safe sex. We used a condom and the condom broke. She became pregnant. So for the last month before I got my six month blood test, she was pregnant. And that, that was, uh, it was awful for me, but I know it was extremely awful for her. She didn't know, you know, she was, she was really unsure as to whether she was infected now and, and our baby. Je vais toujours avoir à penser à cet incident-là, ça c'est clair. Ça, tu peux pas effacer ça. T'as beau vouloir, probablement que je vais être plus prudent, puis on peut pas être plus prudent parce que j'ai affaire à des humains, j'ai affaire à des gens avec un comportement, je le fais pas, parce qu'ils m'avisent pas, ils me disent pas, Pierre, en ouvrant la porte, je te saute dessus, là. Mais quand on a été victime de ça, qu'on sait les conséquences que ça a, euh, on fait euh, beaucoup plus attention. Je ne sais pas si je ne rentrerai pas dans une cellule parce qu'un détenu va essayer de couper les, les poignets puis que je vais être obligé de faire des, de la réanimation euh, cardiaque puis que je vais, de, vais être infecté rien qu'en voulant le sauver. Fait que c'est sûr que cet événement-là, dans ma tête, va toujours être présent. Euh, mais je vais faire ma job. Parce que c'est ça que j'aime faire ma job. C'est ça que j'aime être agent correctionnel. You reenact this... Uh the incident itself constantly. Would I, what would I do? Would I do something different? Um, I, could have, I, could have done, I could have done this, I could have done that. I've probably gone over in my head a thousand times since that first exposure on what I would do if I was ever exposed again. And I know the, the reaction will probably be far different than it was the first two times. How 
you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, paper? Oh. Bringing her to the hospital. It looks like she's going to be okay. Somebody could throw water on you, throw you full of mustard, or throw you even with gasoline, but it stays on the outside. If somebody is throwing semen, if somebody is throwing urine, blood, feces, and it enters your body, or you think it enters your body, you feel very different. It's, uh, it's like you've been touched. In some way, the inmate's essence has seeped into your core. I can't think of another way to be assaulted that's, to me, more vicious or more uh, vile than to spit on someone or throw your bodily fluids on them. I'd sooner be punched in the face when it comes to getting a blood sample, uh, correctional officers definitely feel that they're less important than the inmates uh, because they feel they're worried for themselves, they're worried for their families. Uh, and information that would quell some of their anxiety, some of their fears, some of their worries uh, is not being given to them and available for them. Uh, he shouldn't be given the opportunity to stay confidential about it. He's the one that made the decision to bite somebody and assault somebody. And now it's my right, I believe it should be, uh, that I am made aware of whether or not he has a virus that I can contract because of his wrongdoing. Tu dis rien que parce que je suis un travailleur, j'ai été travaillé à ce matin-là, bon, ben ma vie pas moi changé. Puis pourtant, moi, je voulais rien gagner ma vie, ne plus faire la job que j'avais à faire. There are more disease carriers now incarcerated than ever before. Uh, I really do consciously think that uh, not all of them are, but I treat all the offenders like they are infected or have the potential to um, the potential to infect me. I haven't formed a relationship or even tried to during this period of time because I just can't expose anybody to that. And how do you say to somebody? Oh, by the way, I might have hepatitis or HIV, uh, and I'm not cleared to for a year. You know, like you have to tell somebody, and you just you can't. I know myself well enough to know it will never go away. It will always be in the back of my mind. It's not necessarily anything that would uh, further impede my ability to live my life, but it's ever present. It has permanently changed my life.